All right, so back at it, going around the 67. Pretty much got the quarter done last video. It's down there somewhere. Now we're gonna start working our way around the trunk area. I got a couple of holes I need to weld up and I'll show you what's wrong with my uh, trunk bracket, our trunk lid bracket. I don't even know what it's called. <clears throat> trunk retention area. That sounds good. When I said I got a couple holes, and this is what I'm talking about, not a, not crazy, just enough to be a pain in the ass to MIG weld <clears throat> and filling up these little holes. They're all over right in here. You know, it's probably about a dozen, give or take, right in this area. And I was talking about changing out this whole lip, but honestly, it's it's easier, and I'm always about easy because this is not a Meekum auction car. We already know that. This is just an average Joe 67 Cornet. They're still pretty plentiful out there. They're still pretty cheap as far as Mopar go. And uh, these are definitely, you're definitely not in a charger realm when you mess with Cornettes. And I love Dodge Cornettes. I think they're bad to the bone. So basically what I'm saying is, my point is, I'm not gonna cut this whole package tray out and weld a new one in. We're just gonna fix the holes and we're gonna go with what we got. So yeah, one right there, a couple there. And that's pretty much it. Maybe a little bit right in that area. Nothing too crazy, nothing too overwhelming. Trunk looks absolutely beautiful. But here's what I'm talking about when I said this trunk retention spring thing. So I got up underneath here and I'm not gonna get in there right now, but <clears throat> these spring, I don't know if they're called spring lines or whatever. You guys know what I'm talking about. They're like awesome design Mopar had or any trunk area. You got these long, retention they're actually pieces of steel dial really but you get pressure on them and that's what helps you open and close the trunk real easy well anyway this one here it's got a pocket it rides on inside up underneath here and the pockets worn out so it's not holding anymore and i was gonna kind of just take this whole area I'm not sure what I'm gonna do if I'm gonna slice it here uh, I don't know on that one yet your guess is as good as mine I could drill out the the um, spot welds take the whole piece out but then I go to the other car and try to drill that out it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a good three hour day right there just for that All right, guys, back at it. Day, whatever. I don't even keep track anymore. We just, we just keep on grinding day after day. That's all we can do. 
Anyway, we're back out here at the 67 parts car. Don't get mad at me. I have to, we're gonna torch off this bracket back here for this trunk. We gotta sacrifice some to save another. But anyway, that's not really, I'm not really sacrificing. This car was bought with the deal of the 440 Cornet that we're doing. And this was already a parts car before I even messed with it. That quarter was already cut off and I'll show you that here. <clears throat> <laughs> this is the way I got it. So now it's just a good donor car. There's a lot of rust in it. The front end is cut off. Anyway, so don't get sad. Don't get mad. Because you know I would never do that to any of these cars unless, you know, unless they're just absolutely roach like this. So this is the bracket I need for the trunk. I'll show you that right quick. Right under here on the car we're doing, the Street Freak car. This is all worn out. So the springs really flopping around, which is making the trunk bracket right here just flop. And I'll show you that when we get back in. So what I'm gonna do is on that one, I'll drill it out real nice. But on this one, we'll just take the torches and just cut this out and then we can clean up what we need, you know, when we get back in the shops. I have a bucket of water. I don't wanna start no fires back here. It's not really that dry, but it's just dry enough when I start throwing sparks. You guys know how this game goes. Next thing you know, you get smoke. And uh, next thing you know, I'm getting fires back here, which that's not a good, <laughs> that ain't good for me. So let me blow it off. Let me throw some water around it. And let's get the torches out and let's start getting this piece that we need. We got the piece off, you guys seen that? I just drilled it out, just pulled all that excess steel that was around it that we torched off. And now I got a nice clean bracket. Oh, I stuck it in the uh, sand blaster as well and just sanded off all the rust and stuff like that. And the old paint the best I could. Anyway, I wanted to show you this right here before I start working and then not film. So I will show you this when I get the piece off, but what I'm gonna do is I gotta get in this car here and just start doing the same thing. I'm gonna take out all the spot welds <laughs> and then hopefully get this piece off. But here's what I was talking about, it's just flapping in the wind and I'll show you why when I get the piece off because I can't get the camera down there to show you. But basically there's a hook that these long rods go into and it's so wallered out that the rod isn't even sitting in the, the, pa the like the little, I don't know, like the pocket, I should say. And I'll show you here in a second. So it's just, it's not even doing anything. So there's no easy fix on that. The only way to get that out is, I mean, the only way to fix it, I should say, is take that whole bracket. And that's why we're going down this road. Okay, day after Thanksgiving. I hope you guys had a happy Thanksgiving. Enjoyed time with family and friends and did all that stuff, you know, yada, yada. But hey, we're back in the shop now. That's enough of that crap. Got this piece out, last we left off, that was about three days ago. Anyway, this is that trunk area piece that I was telling you about. And this is what I wanted to show you, how it was all wallered out right in here. And there was nothing I could do to fix that. So, you know, as you've seen in the last part, we took that whole piece, that whole section out of the old parts cornet out there. This was a pain in the, pain in the ass to get out, no doubt. I had to keep on grinding on it, keep on drilling out, you know, all the spot welds. It was, it was tough because you're up underneath the trunk lid. Anyway, we got it. So, let me show you what we got going now. I just got her hanging on the vice grips, hanging on for dear life. I'm going to put a spot weld on it right here and then I'm going to be able to move it around to where I 
think it needs to go. I got one of the hooks. This one fell off the this area there. I'm hoping when I get that welded on that I'm going to be able to just kind of shimmy that around that bar and hopefully that'll go back to normal and then this one will go back to normal because those things are a pain in the butt, I ain't gonna lie. They're so, they're like the simplest design, but at the same time, they're pain in the ass to get back in and stuff because there are two bars and you have to make sure in the right hole, whatever. Anyway, let's get it welded up and uh, let's see if we can't get that thing to work right. I love when you get all situated and I remember that I ran out of weld the other day and I forgot to change out the weld prop. All right, let me show you what we got going on here. So we finally got this bracket or the uh, the hinge on here, and now it's good to go. If it don't break, no, I'd be fine. Now what I did start doing is last we left off. It's been a few days now. Is I uh, welded this lip all up as you seen there, and then I applied just a little bit of filler around here. I had to do it twice, so I put a first. Uh, I put a first coat sanded that all down and i was like eh, it needs one more so i did one more we're gonna sand that off today i'm gonna push this car back outside and yeah we're getting there i just want to get this trunk lip trunk lip area done today so we can move on oh how many times do have i done this All right, so we made it to another day of sanding, applying more Bondo, sanding, applying more Bondo, sanding some more, buying some more Bondo, and continuing to sand. If I knew it was gonna be this much work, I would've left it in primer. What we're gonna do today is, you guys seen, I finally got the trunk lip complete. I think that there's a couple pinholes I just wanna fill up one more time. I didn't want to turn this thing into a Mecham auction car and I feel like every little thing I look at I'm like oh we got to fix that we got to fix that we'll be here for a hundred years and we're not trying to get that crazy anyway let's go to the front let me I kind of had some brainstorms last night of some of the things I want to do to that I was on the old FB and I seen a super stock like a 69 dart 68 and the engine bay was so clean all it was was just motor all just engine <clears throat> and they had all the holes 
plugged up. They had all, everything was like one little couple wires coming down and it was just engine and that was it. And I was like, man, that's kind of what I want to go with on this. So let's go up to the front. We're at the front of the 67 Dodge Coronet and I got to get my dates right. You know how many times I have to edit out videos because I give the wrong dates on these cars. <laughs> anyway, so I seen that 69 super stock uh, Dart and I just noticed how clean their firewall was. They eliminated all the little holes and you know having a, going for the super stock look that's basically it it's there's nothing to the car there's you know engine trans you know rear end bare necessities and that's kind of the way this car is building itself but what i wanted to tell you guys is i like to thank jessica and uh the staff over at super clean they sent me another box and I want to try this new foaming degreaser this time and see if we can't clean this engine compartment out a little better. If you guys want a box of Super Clean, just leave me a comment, say Super Clean or how you love Super Clean. And uh, make sure you have a home address and you're here in the United States. I'll randomly pick and I'll, you know, do the best I can to help you guys out as well on your poor boy's budget, just like me. I swear when this is all over, you know, stay with me only in about two more years. I'm gonna do one of those short videos where every time I push this thing out, it's better and better and better until it's finally driving on its own. Well, we're gonna do that, I promise. But you know, you gotta stick with me for about two more years. Anyway, you know how many times I push this car out of this bay and chew probably at least two dozen times already. It's awesome, gets me a good workout. And every time it gets a little better and better. But let's get this thing pressure washed and let's see if we can't degrease her a little bit with super clean. <laughs> I'll tell you what, this is the bottle to have right here. You don't have to do no work. And you know I'm not about doing any kind of work. Just spray and go. Don't forget, they got all wheel cleaner, uh, the degreaser, and this right here is just the easy spray degreaser. Oh, and that foam. I like the foam as well. But we give them all a whirl. I, I mean, I can't. you can't go wrong with super clean, in my opinion. It works, it works good. And uh, let's, let's get this thing knocked out, I'll show you. We haven't done a sticker shout out in a while. Probably not gonna do one today. But if you guys wanna send me your stickers and I'll put it up on the old 69 Roadrunner quarter panel, we could do that one of these days. My PO box is down below in the description. I check that thing about once every three weeks and something fell, hang on. And I'm back. We could do a sticker shout out, put you up on the old quarter panel. Not, not only for me to check out your sticker every day, but I always like to look at your guys' channels too and see what you guys are up to and what you're doing. Gives me more ideas. It puts, pe puts you out there. Uh, I could give you a plug and more people can watch your stuff. So anyway, PO box is below. Send me your stickers, we'll get you up. And, and also I wanted to thank Bill uh, over at Dude Mopar, check out his channel. I got it up on the screen. I'll show it to you. He's he's got a few cars. 66 Cornet is one of his cars on this channel. But he does a little bit of everything. Awesome dude. Awesome Mopar guy. He was out at No Name Nationals. Got got a chance to meet him. But he sent me something special, and I'm so grateful. This is one of the hard things that I was trying harder things that I was trying to find, and. Um, he said, Brad, I got one and I will uh, send it to you. And I was like, heck yeah. But I'll tell you what guys, you send me um, stuff like this. You know, I feel so blessed that you guys are interested in this kind of stuff. 
and you're investing in this car, the least I could do is give you a plug. And he's like, ah, you don't need to give me, you don't have to say nothing. I'm like, boo, S. I'm at least gonna, you know, give you a shout out of your channel. That's the least I could do. But anyway, let me show you what I got here. And I'm, dude, this is, this is awesome. Kind of a hard commodity to find, and I'm out picking all the time. You guys know that. Clutch pedals for the Cornette. And this came out of his car. He said he had a six cylinder or one of the cars. It might be the purple one he's got up on his, um, his channel. But anyway, Bill, dude Mopar, thank you very much. I'm so grateful. This is one of the harder pieces to find. And uh, thank you for, for uh, taking the time to send this to me. It's gonna go to good use, I promise. So uh, that was one thing I wanted to show you. And man, I'm stoked on that. Let me show you the other thing. I forgot to grab it. So one of my Facebook followers, Chris, Chris Mitchell, he went out of his way to dig this out of the storage bin. He, he said he bought it a long time ago or something and never used it. But that's exactly what I was looking for, for the, uh, Cornet, and this thing is in pristine condition too so man i i'm just grateful that you guys are helping me out and i'm also just thankful that you would actually take your time to send me something like this so i appreciate it now i had um thank you again chris that's awesome this is going to be bad to the bone so mark uh Bigfoots and Mopars was also going to send me one. His was a little bit cracked. I haven't seen it yet. And um, check out his channel, Bigfoots and Mopars. He got a bad to the bone 67 Cornet, which if you guys watched my No Name Nationals video, the last one we just did, I actually, we got a chance to go down the track together. So he was talking about sending me one too. And I think his is a little higher, which, you know, I was like, dang, that's exactly what that picture looks like, what we're trying to go for. I haven't got it yet. I'm hoping to still get it. We can put them side by side and I could pick the one that's gonna look, you know, better for this car. But right now we got this one. And um, like I said, Chris sent me that and so grateful. We got Greasy Grudge Grip Wipes. Uh, I was going to show you guys this gentleman here. He's doing all the like soaps and stuff for, uh, for guys like us that are hands-on kind of people and, uh, check him out. Greasy grudge he sent me some soap. I could, I've been trying to do a plug for this for a while and he finally, I mean, I should say not he, he sent it. I should say, I finally get to open this soap up because I didn't want to use anything until I gave everybody, a, gave him a shout out and showed everybody what he's got. But um, check him out. He's got some uh, Miracle Butter hand repair bomb when your hands are all cracked up from sticking them in the solvent tank. Use this, use this stuff and you'll be silky smooth and your hands will just be all moisturized. So anyway, check that out. Greasy Grudge, I want to say thank you to him. I don't know if you've seen these hand wipes. Give him a shout, buy some of his product, tell him you're here to support. We got to support each other in this game because <clears throat> we're the only ones making it happen around here. <laughs> Ain't nobody up, in, up north gonna ha make it happen for us, so we got to support each other. Anyway, let's go look at the car. Let's go see how clean that engine compartment is. We can start welding up some holes. All right. It's getting colder guys, it's getting harder to spread Bondo. It sucks because I'm trying to knock this thing out quick as can be. As you can see, engine bay. I'm gonna say definitely is a lot cleaner than it was. And I like having them clean like this because I was trying to dry it off for you guys, but it just didn't make, I didn't make it happen in time. But I like getting all the contaminants off. It's like I feel like I'm starting with a clean slate and then I could go through here. I'm not fighting grease, oil, dirt, you know, especially when you weld, because then it starts making your welds glob up and not wanting to do things the way not smooth. So we got it all cleaned off. 
Thanks to them. Thanks for super clean once again. Maybe we could slide something else in on the uh, break up the monotony on this car because I mean it's going, but it's the, the problem with body work, and you guys know this, is you can't rush it. It dries when it's gonna dry, and you can only sand on it when it's ready. And it's like, dang, I'm put, I'm spreading Bondo, and I'm like, well, I'm gonna knock this out, and you know, we'll we'll do this side today in about an hour. Well, since it's cold out, Bondo isn't drying fast. You start sanding on it, and it globs up. So there's another hour, two hours of your day. You know how this stuff goes. So we're doing it as it's allowing us to do it, and we'll continue on. I promise. This car is. Slowly, it's gonna be a slow build, but it's gonna be awesome when it's done. You guys know that. All right, back is just about complete. We're moving on. Thank you to the sponsors. Thank you to Chris. Thank you to Bill. Thank you to Jessica. And yeah, one of these days, this thing is gonna be ripping. Stick with me. It might be a year from now, it might be two years, but it will, I promise. Anyway, my name is Brad, Poor Boys Garage. Let them rip, not rock, keep on saving them. Don't send them to the crusher. Why? Because we hate that. And we are out.